Hi, this is Prophetess Donna Anderson, and yes, this is Girl Chat. Um, how are you guys doing? I'm hoping everyone is blessed and highly favored. Um, tonight, my guest is, God bless you, Apostle, please, um, my guest for tonight is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Um, I am, yeah, she's an awesome woman of God. Oh, there she is. <laughs> is a doctor of education and counseling and psychology. She is a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, she is a certified clinical <laughs> Hey, Prophet Donna, how are you? Hey, I'm going to let you do your own introduction. Oh, okay. Hold on, let me get my lighting right. I'm too bright. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Well, I am Dr. Carmen Bryant. I am uh, a licensed mental health counselor here in the great Northwest. Um, I am also a certified life coach, certified trauma professional, and uh, a licensed minister uh, under the auspices of Apostle Helen Sadler from Anthony Sanders Global Ministries. Amen. 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 Um, um, you're also, you're also with your counseling with the Northwest. Is the main it's the main thing that you do. So can you, so can kinda, you kinda explain your YouTube, YouTube channel? channel? Sure. Um, so I do have a YouTube channel up. Um, uh, I am under Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And so I specialize in overcoming narcissist abuse. Um, I educate people. Um, I originally started off with um, creating the program for uh, women. And uh, because women were the ones who reached out. And, and that was the greatest clientele that I had of women um, going through uh, domestic violence and specifically narcissist abuse. And then have an experience it myself. And so that's who I originally began to um, uh, assist. And now with the YouTube channel, a lot of men are now coming forward and start um, sharing with a lot of us women about their experience uh, with narcissist abuse from women. And so I began just teaching awareness, teaching what it was like, teaching what it looked like. And so that's how I actually started. Okay, can you tell, okay, us, can you tell us what a narcissist is? Okay, well, uh, first of all, a lot of times you hear people just throw out that name narcissist. And so some people throw out that name, that's a narcissist, that's a narcissist. Well, a lot of times what people are referring to is probably a selfish or self-centered egotistical person, you know, somebody that they're having a hard time with. Somebody's probably, you know, has issues and need to grow up. Um, however, at the same time, narcissistic personality disorder is actually a mental health disorder. Um, what we use is the, uh, well, when I say we, I mean the um, those in the psychology profession, those in the mental health profession, those that use the, ma we use a manual that's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual Number 5. And in there, it tells you the different types of mental health disorders. Uh, narcissistic personality disorders happen to be a personality disorder. It's a dysfunction of the personality. Something within that person, something has happened to that individual, meaning that uh, there was some type of trauma. Uh, something happened within the developmental stages of that person when they were younger uh, that really caused a uh, like arrested development or a mental delay. Mental delay meaning that it affected their empathy and their compassion. And uh, we have this chemical which is known as oxytocin. And in the oxytocin, uh, that oxytocin is what helps us to bond to people. Well, a narcissist, a person with narcissistic personality disorder has a problem with bonding with people. They don't have empathy. They do not they have they do not have the ability to bond to people. They don't have compassion passion like the average person does. We learn to bond with people and we learn to have compassion or empathy for people, you know, based on what we learn. You know, if, if a child falls, you give them a hug, oh, it's okay. Or, you know, when they're, when they're choking a cat, you tell them, no, soft touch. No, you know, so we learn by interacting. Well, these individuals do not have the capacity to bond with people or empathize. They also, another sign is uh, they have this grandiose way of thinking. They're very entitled. Uh, they believe that all the attention should be focused on them. 
Uh, it's all about them. If you're ever in a relationship with a narcissist, you'll find out it's a one-sided relationship. It's all about them. It has nothing to do with you. But these people are highly dysfunctional, but they're hitting in plain sight because a lot of them are very, uh, what they present is a very happy-go-lucky, nice individual, people that are within the community, give money, people you find in the pulpit, people you find in the banking system, in the healthcare system, and even in the mental health care system. And I deal with a lot of people that are coming from the mental health that come from narcissists. And so they're hidden in plain sight. You just don't know that you're dealing with them. So how do we figure out that we're dealing with them? Well, you know, the biggest thing, most people assume that just because I'm teaching, teaching about it on a daily basis, that it's easy to pick up on. Most narcissists are not easily detected. They're not. It's a matter of time. It's called the mask. They wear this mask. They, they live in this uh, world of illusion. Um, they, they create, they don't have their own self-identity. And so they have to, what's called, is get supply. They get supply by connecting with people and mimicking you. And so they don't have the opportunity. They, they, they never develop. They never create their own identity. You'll notice that they have pieces and parts of people of people that they meet. They create their own little identity. And so it's not easy. It's not easy to pick up on a narcissist until you pay attention to a narcissist. I think the biggest thing that is happening right now is that a lot of people are becoming aware because people are taking the opportunity to teach the signs and symptoms of a narcissist. That is how they're being detected now. But a narcissist is not an easy person to detect. One thing you have to notice is notice that they start copying you or mimicking you or they mirror you. Um, they, they do what you do or they all of a sudden they like what you like. If you notice, a lot of times they're, they're very uh, shut, they're closed up. And they want to know more about you uh, than you wanting to know about them. They prefer that you talk a lot. And so what you'll notice is you tend to tell them a lot of your business. They tend to be people that are very easy to talk to. Uh, that Oh, my gosh, it's like we have a connection. These people are easy to talk to and relate to. We have so much in common. But when you step back, you really don't have anything in common with them. What is happening is they're copying you and mimicking you. They, might even, they may not even like rock and roll, but once you say you like rock and roll, you'll notice they'll come back and they'll start talking about rock and roll. And so a lot of times they're not very easily detected. And, and, and narcissists, you just have to watch. And, and I really, um, you know, if, if you don't mind, I really tell people, go and look up these, you know, people that teach about narcissism. They'll give you detail. I do it on my, on my uh, um, YouTube channel. I tell details about the narcissist. It makes it easier to pick up. But at the same time there are different levels of narcissism there are some that are very obvious and then there are some that are hitting you can't tell those are called the greater the greater narcissist then you have those the lower narcissists the ones that really cannot contain their emotions but they're all about themselves those are the people that you'll see they're all about themselves they want to be seen they want a title they want to gather followers and it's, and and, they, and, it, and if you talk to them it's like you're talking to an individual that really is like they're looking right past you, but they're all focused on their own conversation, their own wants, their own needs. It has nothing to do with you. You can almost feel a disconnect between these people. So how do we, so how do we fall in love with uh, One of the biggest problems that, you know, for women, for women, we tend to talk too much. And so when we get, you know, when we meet someone, number one, we kind of look at, oh, now that brother, no, he's fine. You know, and, and they know it, too. So, uh, you know, it, most narcissists are very good-looking good looking men and women both alike. You know, so men and women alike. But a lot of them are very attractive. They are very attractive. So they'll catch your eye. They know that they're attractive. And you have what's called the, co the, uh, the somatic narcissist. The somatic narcissist, which is one of the group of narcissists, the somatic narcissist is one that is really focused on looks, uh, material possessions, um, sex, um, status quo and so a lot of them are very attractive and so they'll catch your eye once they've caught your eye they're charmers and so they'll tell uh, a lot of times women jump in the relationship too quick because you're still hurting you're wounded you have some vulnerabilities and they play on your vulnerabilities because we tend to talk so much that we talk and we draw a picture of what we want and so all they do is listen to what we say and they become everything that we say and they play that perfect role. They play that, that not just a perfect role, but they, they create this character 
in your imagination of what you really want. That's why most women say, but it felt like it was just a soul connection. We were just connected. It just felt like he knew me. It's not that he knew you or she knew you. It was the fact that you told them everything you wanted them to be. So now they have a character and a role that they have to play. And the thing about it is that you tell so much of your vulnerabilities that they put the knight in shining armor or that woman that meets all your needs, but that's not possible. Wow. wow. So, so, if we find ourselves in a relationship with a narcissist, how are we able, able to get out, get out of it? You know, uh, because you have a Christian channel, I can say this. Number one, uh, you know, we live by faith and not by sight. That's the first thing. If you find yourself overwhelmed with emotions and feelings and and sexual all of a sudden your sexual drive if you're a woman that has has been faithful has when i say faithful i mean you have not been in a relationship you're focused you're building you know we're human beings and we have sex drive that is a part of being a human uh that's what we are we're sexual creatures because we're created to pro we are we have been created to procreate and so to have sexual urges is very normal uh, but if you find yourself with a, an individual that comes into your life, whether it's a male or female, and all of a sudden that sexuality is woken up and you begin to have these sexual uh, feelings and, and emotions all over the place, you can't stop thinking about them. All of a sudden you find yourself always wanting to talk to them and always want, you find yourself more involved in thinking about them than you are focused on your purpose, on your mission, on your calling. That is a red flag. That is a red flag to back up because now your emotions are everywhere. Your mind, you should not be, your emotions and your mind should not be everywhere. Before, and, and I can speak to women by saying that before you give a man your heart, you need to know something about him. You should be shut up and your heart should be blocked because you need to know something. Nowadays in 2019, you know, now we need to see your portfolio. We need to see your medical records. We need to see your retirement plan. We need to know, do you have a business plan? How do you treat your mom? How do you handle your sisters? You know, and likewise for men. But, you know, if, if we take the time, if you go to a car lot of you, you know, we make these $100,000 purchases on homes and we take the opportunity to spend money on a house inspection, a good realtor. We want the property. We want people to inspect it, make sure the foundation is good. If we spend that much time and money on investing in a home, then why are we not investing in our relationships? And people are jumping so quick because their emotions are everywhere and, and they end up getting into a relationship with a narcissist and never knew it. And some of the people have been in it for so long, never knew they were in a relationship with a narcissist. Wow. wow. <laughs> How do you never How do you never know? Uh, they're, hey, they're hidden in plain sight. You know, you're you're not dealing with, you got to remember, you know, first that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So you're, you're dealing with, you're actually dealing with a spirit, and you know, and, and when you're dealing with a spirit, you think of it, the devil's men look good too. You know, yeah, that's, devil, yeah, that's the, true. the devil got some sexy men too. And, and the Lord got some powerful sexy men also. You just have to know the difference. What is holy and what is not. Right. Right. So... so how do you know that, you know that if you're in, in, that, in that relationship with that narcissist, how do you, how do you feel from it? You know, you, 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 know, you, got, you got out of it, but you're still, but carrying, you're still carrying baggage. Right. So you're still, killing, you're still carrying um, uh, narcissistic injury. Uh, and your own personal narcissistic injury. You know, the biggest thing that I would say is, is first of all, uh, especially for those people that are in the church, is to make sure they get a good mentor. Uh, a mentor is not a, a person that's going to try to be your friend. A mentor understands you have a purpose, there's a call on your life, and a mentor is going to guide you from point A to point B. That is their assignment in your life. They're going to love you, but they're not really concerned whether you dislike what they say to you. I mean, they're not really uh, concerned about if, if, if you are angry at what they say to you because they're concerned about your spiritual life. They're concerned about your life. And so the biggest thing is, is to get a good, you know, if you think about it, Ruth, Ruth had a mentor. And her mentor was Naomi. And that mentor covered Ruth. 
Um, and she actually into her call. Ruth was busy working. She wasn't looking for a man, and they only covered her and then guided her into the right field to cover for herself. And so mentorship is so important. When you have a good mentor, don't abuse the mentor. You hold on to that mentor. You listen to what that mentor has to say because a mentor can see the devil coming before you see the devil coming. They can tell you, I don't think you need to be in a relationship at this particular time because you have not healed from your past wounds. They can see things things about you that you don't see about yourself. Uh, when I was in the military and I was going through equal opportunity training, one of the trainers came out and he says, there are things that you know about yourself that nobody knows about you. There are things that you know about yourself that people know about you. And then there are things that people know about you that you don't know about yourself. A mentor knows about you that you don't know about yourself. And so the most important thing when you're coming out of this relationship is to make sure you lock into a good mentor. And, and, you know, our pastor always says, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher is waiting. And so that mentor is waiting. And if there's a God assigned mentor, that mentor is waiting for you so that you can start to heal. And most people assume, just like when you take penicillin, the doctor tells you, you take the penicillin until it's finished. When the penicillin is finished, you should be good. If you stop before then because you feel good, the penicillin might not work. And the next time, it may not work. And so people, when they come out of a narcissistic relationship, they're going through a grief and loss process. Everybody knows that when you're going through a grief and loss process, that's not the time to interject another relationship. You have to go through the full process of grief and loss. And I always teach about the seven stages of grief and loss. And you can look it up online. You have to process through those. Di Everybody doesn't go through it in order. Everybody doesn't go through all of it. But you have to process through it all, all that. Because if you don't, you're liable to get into another relationship. And this time, the injury can be worse. So that was my first and most important thing is to lock into a good mentor. And number two, if you can't lock into a good mentor, find you a good Christian counselor that understands and also understands domestic violence, understands abuse, and and prayerfully understands narcissist abuse. Okay, so, okay, so it doesn't it doesn't have to be domestic violence for narcissists. Well, for well, it is it is domestic violence. What they're doing is domestic violence. It's just a very unique part of domestic violence. When I say unique, it's a very almost insidious um, type of domestic violence because some narcissists also have additional diagnoses such as psychopath or sociopath or they have depression, PTSD, most anxiety, PTSD, psychopath, and psychopath. And those are very dangerous individuals. You, they're the nicest people. Look at Ted Bundy, the nicest, most charming people, but will kill you if they have an opportunity to do it. And those are the malignant narcissists. They will kill you, especially when you try to leave. The exact same wheel that you use in the domestic violence, power, and control is the exact same thing you use in narcissists. They are committing domestic violence. They're doing it in a very insidious way, though. Right, I, right. I, I, a, lot of, a lot of narcissists are not going to beat you up. No, no, they may not physically touch you, but right. they're going to right. mentally try. They're going to mentally destroy you. Yeah, that's what yeah, I was that's trying, what to, I was get trying to get to. That they're, they're going to mentally destroy your destroy mind. your mind. They'll mentally abuse you. They're mentally, emotionally. That they're, they're that's why they're called soul hunters. They hunt the soul. That's the same thing in the Bible when they were talking about Nimrod was a soul hunter. Narcissists are soul hunters. They will cause your soul to fly. What does it mean for your soul to fly? It means that your think about your emotions is everywhere. You God wants us to have temperance and self control. Once a narcissist gets through with you, you have no temperance, you have no self control, you're running behind them, you're wondering what happened, you're all over the place, you may not even be in church anymore, you're not listening to your mentor, soul all over the place, all over the place. You just and some people have committed suicide. So all over the place and I've committed suicide. And this is what I'm trying to prevent for people to go out there and commit suicide because it was never their fault. It's who they attached to. That wow. They were wow. So we have, we so have to be careful with, with who we open ourselves up to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Think about it. Everybody's not, you got the holies of holies. Everybody can't go into the holies of holies, you know. Everybody is not, is not allowed to come into your intimate space. And you should look at it as your holies of holies. Everybody is not 
uh, worth and everyone is not assigned to be in your holies of holies. That's a place of intimacy. Your holies of holies, your intimate private place, your thoughts, your intimate thoughts, your sexuality, all of that. That's a holy place. Everybody's not ordained to be there. Right. So, right. so if we see if a red flag, 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 we should make sure that we don't ignore it. Oh, absolutely not. And, and some red flags are so subtle, we pay no attention to it. And that's why I talk about the devalue stage when it comes to a narcissist. Well, they love bomb. And in that love bomb phase is everything that a girl ever wanted. Everything that a man ever wanted. She going to make you feel like the man that you've never felt like. He going to make you feel like the woman that you've never been. That's a, that's a game. But in the midst of the love bombing, um, they'll do things like disrespect your time tell you what you like, tell you what food to order. There's little subtle signs in there that you don't pick up and you kind of dismiss, oh, you know, that's just how he is, or, oh, you know, that's just how she is. She's she a little bossy, or, you know, he's just a very uh, a strong-willed man. No, those are little red flags. And we have to set standards for ourselves and boundaries for ourselves. I, and I think, I, and I we, think as, we as women uh, ignore, uh, ignore the, red the red flags because we because want to be loved, loved so bad. And especially if you're broken and if you've never healed from, like, family brokenness, you know, uh, dysfunctional. A lot of us come from dysfunctional families. And so there's a lot of dysfunction. You know, I even talk about the fact, look at the example that you had in your own household. Were your parents affectionate? Were, did your parents hold hands? Did they argue in public? Was there abuse going on in the home? Was there domestic violence? Did they even know how to love you? Was there alcoholism or drug addictions? You know, did they talk to you? You know, did they touch you? Did they, did, you know, children need touch. Children need to be affirmed. Children need to be heard. Did this stuff happen in your household? A lot of times we take, we, we don't know how to have a relationship and we just jump into situations. So we have situationships. Situationships, not relationships. Okay, we okay. don't know. What kind of example do we have? We don't know. So how do we, so how do we get out of it? How do we get out of the situation? Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, not situation. Situation. Okay. So, so red flags, red flags have, came have came up. up. We know what we we're, know dealing, what we're with. dealing with. We have a we mentor. Have a mentor. Mm -hmm. What other what steps, other steps do we need to take to make sure, to make sure that, that we're getting, we're getting healed, healed, and, healed and, and we won't go, we won't go into that, that again? Because I know sometimes we go from one narcissist, thank you, thank you, Daddy Hill, and we go right back into another relationship with another narcissist. Or the old one comes to Okay, so, okay, you want me to talk about how to avoid getting back in it or talk about the Hoover first? <laughs> Either one. Either one. Okay, well, let me, let me talk about the Hoover. Um, and so the Hoover is when they have discarded you, have gotten rid of you, maybe to go and pursue or lock in another source of supply. And that's what they look at us as. We are sources of supply to get fuel from. There's something that you have that they want, and once they've depleted you of it or they're so they've gotten bored with you, they move to another source of supply. It doesn't mean that you're not worth anything. It just means that they've grown bored and they want something else. And so what happens is, is the Hoover is when they try to pull you back. Say the things didn't work out with the old source of supply. I mean, with the, with the new source. Say it didn't work out or it wasn't what they thought. And sometimes you may have been that primary source of supply. You may have been the wife or the husband. You're the one that had the house. You had whatever the job, whatever you had. You took care of that person very well. You are the primary source of supply. Now, they have other sources of supply, but let's say that they left or you discarded them. They'll come back in Hoover just to see that door is still open. They'll see if they can still get in. They'll see if they still have an open opportunity. And most women are like, but I love him. You know, or most men are like, but you know, she my baby mama. And so what ends up happening is they hoover you back in, but really they're, they're devaluing you because they assume, you know, I can always get in the door. It doesn't matter who you're with, I can always come back. And so they hoover you, number one, either that, that, that new source of supply uh, did not work out, uh, or they, they're discarding that one. They need you just to rebound to get to another one. But that, that Hoover, it could be anything. They can Hoover through children. They'll Hoover you through your own children. They'll send messages to the kids, send pictures to the kids. You know, uh, uh, they'll not only do they um, 
send messages to the kids. They may show um, events that they're going through because even in the Hoover, they just want you to react. They want a response. If you've got no contact, meaning you have no conversation with them, they want a reaction that gives them fuel. It makes them feel powerful. Now, the other question that you asked was, uh, you said, how do we... How do we not get into it again? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we talked about the mentorship. We talked about a counselor, you know, and for the believers, you know, my recommendation is to find a believing counselor, a counselor that believes, not someone that, you know, per certification has studied Christian um, uh, principles or Christianity, but one that is a believer. Uh, many people, I'm not certified in Christian counseling, but people will ask me, are you a Christian counselor? I say by belief, not by certification. There's a difference. And most of them will stay. And so the other thing is, is number one, you have to understand the purpose of relationships. You have to start, re if you want to be married, if you want to be a relationship, you need to put yourself on time out. You need to go on a sabbatical. You need to do some fasting. You need to do some soul cleansing. You might need to write a book, you know, write something. You need to look at yourself uh, and purchase Pastor Kathy's book. Just in <laughs> <laughs> but, but you need to evaluate yourself. Do you understand the purpose of a relationship? Do you know why God created relationships? When he created Adam, he put him in a garden and he made him, he didn't make him where he put him in a garden that was already prepared and Adam had employment. He was working. And so everything God has supplied him with everything. Adam was not lonely. He was alone. That mean he was the only man on this earth. But he was working, and he had the power to produce out of his mouth. He spoke, and he named the animals. He was doing work. When God saw it, he says, okay, I don't want my son to be alone, so I'm going to make him a helper. You can only have a helper if you're doing something. Women are right. created to do to put the flowers and the colors to something. You, we don't just connect with people and he ain't going nowhere. The man has got to be doing something. He's got to have a vision because we are created to be a helper. We're a, a, a paraclete. We're a helper. And, and if you think about it, you have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all in one, right? right. Then you have right. the Father, you have the, the, the Godhead, and then God created Adam, and he created Adam to have dominion over the earth. He gave him full dominion to speak into the earth and create because he was naming, he even named woman, woman with the womb. And think about it. So you got the Father, you got the Godhead, you got the Son, he created Adam, and then you got the Holy Spirit, he created a helper. She's a helper. She comforts him. She advises him. She undergirds him. So you have to understand the purpose of relationships. We don't just jump into situations. You have to understand the purpose of why God created relationships. There is a purpose. We don't just date and have sex to date and have sex. God created us to be in relationships with a purpose. So the man has to be doing something. And then the Bible also says that he who finds a wife. That means we looking. The woman shouldn't be looking for a man. So when people say, girl, you going to find a husband. I'm not looking for a husband. Thank He's looking you. for Thank me. You. He's looking Thank for me. You. But I'm a Ruth. I'm busy in I'm busy in my mother's uh field. I'm working in the field and my mentor Naomi's gonna guide me into the right field and he's gonna see me working. He's gonna see me because he's gonna check me out from a distance and he's gonna know how to pray. So we have to understand we have to understand the purpose of relationship. If you don't understand the the purpose of relationship and let God bring you two together, then you're gonna jump into a situation called narcissism. Right. And I think a lot of women they're they're not busy doing something. They need to they be doing something. something. They need to be doing something. They need to be working the process. They need to be doing what God, what God wants them to do. And that's what, and that's what they, they, they get, they get how they get into those relationships. It's because, it's because they're, 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 they're not doing their purpose. A what you know the, the thing about it is there are more women thinking about trying to be with a man there's nothing wrong with wanting to be in a relationship god created us to be in a relationship there are some people that have vowed i just don't want to be in a relationship anymore god i dedicate myself i think paul said 
Paul said it's better that you don't get into a relationship just like me because of the fact that you want to have worries of the world. When I say worries of the world, you got a responsibility, women. When you have a husband, he got to be taken care of. You got to get up, cook, and clean. You got to make sure that man is taken care of. Likewise, that man's got to make sure he's taking care of her. And it goes both, both ways. And so your first responsibility now, uh, you can't focus on God like you can when you're single. Now you got to focus on each other. So it makes it hard when God tells you to do something. You got to go to your husband and talk to your husband about it. But what if your husband is not hearing the same thing that you're hearing? But you were hearing God when you were by yourself. And so you allow God to build you, let you build your business, write your book. Become It's beautiful for two people to get together and they have something. You know, women are trying to find a man to make sure that they're taking care. Yeah, I'm lonely. I want, if you're really honest about it, why you want to be in a relationship? I'm lonely. lonely. And I want sex. Well, now he's still going all the time, so you're lonely and you're married, and, and you guys are not having sex as often as possible because now you're bored. So what do you have left? You know, you don't even like him, or he don't even like you. You guys are not even friends. You know, it told the man to love the wife, uh, you know, the way that Jesus, that Christ loved the church, and it told the wife to respect the man. Some women don't even respect men. Some men don't even know how to love a woman. And, you know, and, and that's how we are attaching to narcissists because we have this big hole, this big void that you did not allow God to heal first or to fill in your heart. A person you got, when people say, meet my better half, and I think Apostle said that a lot, you know, and she said it, how can you, how you introduce me as your better half? So you're the worst part of me? And I'm the only better part of you? And I'm only half a person and you're the other half a person so we don't put it together and became a whole hot mess? No, no you no. can't be whole. Adam was whole. And when, when God created Eve, they were two grown folk in God. Whole. Yeah. Yeah. Not lonely, yeah. not desperate, not leaking, not empty. And so if you're so desperate to be in a relationship, that is not time to be in a relationship. That is how a narcissist will seek you out. When you still have some, when you have emptiness, when you have some, when you have a lot of vulnerabilities, when you have hurt, you have calluses on your heart that you have not allowed God to heal first. So for us to be for us to be um, for us to be um, I'm gonna get my words together. Um, my thoughts together. So for us to be victims for lack of better words, we need to be on God's purpose. We need to, we need to have mental words, mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to be busy. Mm -hmm. Not being a busy, not being a busy body, body, but busy. busy. <laughs> right. Stay <laughs> other folks' business, yes. Stay in your stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. We're in the military. You have them candy cane. Keep your weapon down center range and do not go past the candy canes. Keep your focus on your target. Don't be firing on other people's target. You gonna hey, hey, hard, hey. but you gonna fail miserably. Yeah, you gotta stay focused. What did God tell you to do? What is your piece of pie in this earth? All of us were created uniquely. We were all created with a purpose and a bit. You do girl chat. I do overcoming narcissist abuse. I can't do girl chat. That is not what I was called to do. You can't do an overcoming narcissist abuse because you don't have the download that God gave me for that program. And I don't have the download for what God gave you in your program. Though our programs are very similar because we're educating people totally different and different pieces of the pie. And each one of us, we need to stay in our lane and do what we're supposed to do. If we stay in our lane, guess what? We're going to come into Boaz's field. Or we're going to show up in Boaz and Steel. Boaz is going to turn around and say, who is that? Amen. Amen. But he's going to notice that you're taking care of Naomi. He's going to notice that you're working. Boaz is a wise man. And Boaz is going to know, okay, this is a woman of God. She believes in God. A real man is not, I mean, of course, you know, looks do help. You know, men are attracted by what they see. We're attracted by what we hear, what goes on in our head. So it does help, to, you know, to look nice, ladies. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you got to be a, 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 a booger bear. But what I'm saying is, you know, but a wise man can look beyond the looks and look into the soul and hear what God has to say. God would tell him that's her or that's not it, son. And a woman, she don't have to look up. I'm not going to look up until God tell me to look up. That's him. Oh, okay. But by then, you may have been having conversations and great conversations with this individual. Never knew that was the one until God takes the blinders off your eyes and say, that's the one. Talking around, now, it, now where it says when, when, when um, a man finds a wife, now is when a, 
when a woman finds a husband, why are you looking for a husband? You gonna run right into a narcissist with open arms. Come here. Okay. Well, I, I go back to what I originally said. You know, we were talking about narcissism. We were talking about narcissist abuse. Um, a lot of times I don't talk about the spiritual aspect of it because I try to stay clinically focused. Um, on this, I do have the freedom to express my belief. And, and I thank you for that, Prophetess. Uh, I do. Um, and one thing that I say is, is male and fe females alike. Men, in the Bible, every king had a prophet. Every king had a prophet to advise him and to keep him accountable and to remind him what God has told him. That is your mentor. Women, Ruth had a Naomi. She had a mentor that was concerned about her life. And because of Ruth, it also concerned Naomi's life. So when Ruth was blessed, so was Naomi. When any king was blessed, so were the prophets that were assigned to them. Mentorship is very, very, very important. Find a good mentor. Find a godly mentor that is concerned with your soul and that will tell you the truth. It's not time yet, daughter. It's not time yet, son. Get yourself, get your life right. It's not time for you to connect. They will tell you. They will t let you know ahead of time when that person is coming, what to look out for. They'll give you the warnings. And that is the advice that I can give you. And for those of you that are coming out these situations, if you don't have a good mentor, go find a godly Christian counselor, and I don't mean Christian counselor by certification, I mean a believer that understands abuse, that understands your belief, and that, if, and hopefully we're educating enough that they understand narcissist abuse. If they don't understand narcissist abuse, find a good godly counselor that actually is a praying counselor that can get downloads from God concerning you when you come into that room. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Brody. I really appreciate you being here with me tonight. Thank you. Um, uh, my guest for next week is Christy Highwalker, and I love you guys, and we'll see you Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-